All right, today I'm going to talk about multi-step inequalities. You ever get that feeling that uh, something that you've done needs to be fixed and you can't remember what it is? Well, I had a video about multi-step inequalities on uh, that I made probably two years ago or something. When uh, It was actually for the classroom that I was using it, uh, not even on YouTube. But um, anyway, I knew that one of my videos had a mistake because I found it one day, but I was in a rush and I never took it down. And two years later, it finally popped up that uh, I took a job... Uh, at least part-time with uh, the Tennessee Online Public School and one of my students caught it because of course I would choose a video that I made a mistake on to post up as a video that the students should watch which is ridiculous anyway Austin Steen thank you very much for picking up on it uh, and you don't have to worry about my ego I make all kinds of stupid mistakes the thing that I did wrong in the video by the way is I dropped a negative so if you hear me talk about not dropping a negative that's why because I do it all the time so I'm no better than anyone else Anyway, let's do some math because that was why you would come to watch this anyway. Uh, so I get k minus 4 plus 7k is less than negative 12. Following all the other procedures I use, I do draw a line here just to keep things organized. I like to keep the same thing on the same side and whatnot. Um, it reminds me at this point, since there's no distributive property, that I can go ahead and look for uh, combining like terms on the same side. I think the real issue sometimes for a lot of people is you try to move the 7k and then move the other k later, and it really is cleaner just to go ahead and combine the terms that are alike. Uh, and if they're on the same side, you just do what they say to do. So 1k, in case you didn't see that, plus 7 is 8 K. That's an important part. Bring everything else down. That way it makes it nice and clean. Uh, from here I'm at the friends of friends stage or the two-step equation. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And of course negative 12 plus 4 is just negative 8 and 8k. Uh, the final step here is a division step. This is where inequalities are different. Uh, if you divide by a negative in the last step, you need to flip that inequality over. Right now it shows like a less than, or k is less than, um, so it would look like this. Right now it says 8k is less than negative 8. If I'm dividing by a negative in the last, in the last step, I need to flip it over. The reason is because you're changing the perspective that the variable is in. So say you're in your room and your door is on your right. If you face the other wall, your door is on your left. So uh, positive and negative is sort of a directional component, and uh, especially on the number line. So um, we're changing perspective if we change the sign that's in front of the variable. In this case, however, I'm just dividing by an 8 might be a nice trick in the beginning to circle this part that way you can see whether to flip it or not this says no so I'm just gonna bring it down and 8 negative 8 divided by 8 is negative 1 so I'm gonna go up to negative 1 and I'm going to circle it it does not have to be filled in because it's not less than equal to and since k is next to the little end I'm going to be less so it's going down here and doing this whole thing like this so to check myself I can actually see the answers on this program perfect so that one's good. Let's go on to another one that has some distributed property in it. A little bit more advanced one, but not much. I'm not very advanced myself. So I'm going to do 3 times the quantity 1 minus 7n is less than or equal to 87. Uh, draw your line. I like to keep things nice and clean when I do this. Um, so I do 3 times 1, and I get 3. And then I'm going to do 3 times negative 7, and I get minus 21 in and really I never think about this as a minus anymore as once I start doing the distributive I always just think of it as a negative so I do 3 times negative 7 if this had been negative 3 I would do negative 3 times negative 7 that way I'll only end up with one sign and I never just automatically drop this sign down that's I'm just telling you what I've done this is personal preference I mean you choose your own adventure really um, now from here I need to get rid of the thing that's furthest away from n on the same side of the line friend to friend so this is plus 3 so I'm going to subtract 3 it's plus 3 because this minus has nothing to do with 3. It's already after it. It doesn't work like that. So this goes down. I get negative 21n is equal to 84. And from here, I'm going to divide by negative 21 in the final step. Oh, if this thing would write. There we go. As a visual component, this has a negative that I'm dividing. So that means I do need to flip what was once uh, less than equal to. It becomes greater than equal to. And you won't go back and forth between equal to and not equal to. That doesn't happen in this kind of problem, so don't worry about it. Um, and then you end up with negative 4. So I'm going to go up to negative 4, and I'm going to circle it. And then I totally need to fill it in because it's got that line underneath to indicate that it's equal to, which means negative 4 is part of the solution itself. And then n is greater than would be going up this way. And what I mean when I say that it's part of the solution is that this 
uh, answer represents a string of numbers, so anything greater than or equal to negative 4. So of course I need to fill in the circle to show that, yeah, negative 4 is part of it. And there's that to prove that I actually got it right. Because, you know, based on the last one, who knows. Uh, last one that I'm going to do, this is one of the uh, double um, distributive problems. So, I don't know why I drove a, a decay there, I guess, because I felt like we're still on a problem that I did previously. So, um, 7 times the quantity 1 plus 2x minus 6x plus 7 is greater than negative 32. So, I need to draw a line here. Uh, I'm going to distribute next. 7 times 1 is 7, of course. 7 times 2x is um, 14x. So it's plus 14x. On this section, you can either remember that negative 1 times the quantity essentially means that you just change the signs on the two inside numbers. It might make it more visually appealing if you put a 1 there, because it is negative 1, essentially. So negative 1 times 6 is minus 6x, and negative 1 times 7 is minus 7, negative 32. Uh, so I'm going to combine like terms at this point. Here's 1 and here's 1. They're on the same side of the line, so that means I can do what it says. So it says positive 14 minus 6, so I get 8x. I'm going to bring these two down, which I could have just combined those as well and skipped a step, but I just want to have it all out there so you, you can see it. Uh, 7 minus 7 is, of course, 0, so those cancel each other. And now I'm left with this, so I'm going to divide by 8. This 8 here tells me that I do not need to flip my inequality, so it will stay greater than. So x is greater than negative 4. Despite the fact that this is negative and this is negative 32, I still don't flip it. It's just the 8, or whatever I divided by, that to get x by itself that matters. And it's only really in the last step. So I'm going to go up to negative 4, and I'm going to circle it, and I'm not going to fill it in because it's greater than. And then I'm going to try to get the pen to actually do this. And there we go. Let me just check to make sure that's right, because it wouldn't be funny if I missed it again and posted this one. So there it is. That's all you need to do. Just follow the basic rules of solving an equation. The big difference is to make sure that you flip the inequality at the end if you divide by negative. Otherwise, same old thing you've been doing forever, and uh, you'll probably do it well anyway. So good luck.